I also watched Tropic Thunder again. Oh, so good. I watched it about every three months. Yeah. I love the, I love it when um, the character Tom Cruise plays. I forget. He's the director. He's yeah. like the owner yeah, yeah, yeah. of the production. Yep. And he meets uh, Four Leaf Clover. No, Tayback. What? I forget his name. Yeah. But I love the scene where he's like, "Who? who's that? He's like, Sergeant Four Leaf Tayback or whatever his name is. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, thank you for your service. You're a, you're a great hero. Now shut the fuck up while I'm talking and let me do my job. <laughs> oh, Tom Cruise's character in that movie. Yeah, he's so good. From a Daddy Jr. Uh, in blackface. You know what? There's no way. Blackface Robert Downey. Yeah, it's I, like, it's like what do you yeah. mean, you people? And he's like, what do you mean, you, you people? What do you mean, you people? <laughs> You're Australian. <laughs> Speak Australian. Me Australian. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a dude disguised as dude, pretend to be another dude. Here's a dude that don't know what dude he is. Yep. Oh, 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 by the way, Jack, the obligatory early amateur podcast question. Are we live? Uh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. We're live. All right. Well, recording for like seven minutes. Seven minutes. Wow. Wow. Oh, okay. We've got to play catch up. <laughs> I'm Fox. That's Shane. That's Churchy. Welcome to Hobby Homies. we got a giveaway. Check out the Discord. See you next week. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> um, no, we got all this spare time. What are we going to talk about? Just Tropic Thunder? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> My favourite scene. <laughs> it's just Hobby a good... Hobby Homies. <laughs> Tropic Thunder. <laughs> Addition. Yeah. 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 Welcome to Hobby Homies. Yep. I'm Fox. I'm Shane. And over uh, over yonder is uh, Churchy. It's Jack. Mm-hmm. He's through the soundproof. You can't hear him. No. It's impossible. It's, Im- it's absolutely impossible. It's an impenetrable fortress. It's the cone of silence. It's the cone of silence. I can yeah. barely hear you, Shane. I know. What? Huh? 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 Hobby Homies? What'd you call me? Homo. <laughs> <laughs> Thunder Tropic? Thunder Tropic. Shut up, Jack. <laughs> um, yeah, so today's episode. This is another Hobby Corner episode. Yes, welcome to the Hobby Corner. Yeah. Today, we are talking about everyone's favourite topic, which is... Tropic Thunder. Tropic Thunder. Uh-huh. Building and modelling. Yeah. Yeah, it's like basically everything about the preparation of your army... That's not painting. That is not painting. Yes. <laughs> because we've already done painting. Yes. So if you want to know about painting stuff, little different techniques and stuff... Go watch a YouTube channel that's more informative than us. Yeah. However, or, or or listen to episode six. Yeah, true. Hobby Corner painting. Yes. Yeah. So every now and then we'll release a Hobby Corner episode that sort of like dials in on some aspect of the hobby that isn't. Ah, I was going to say not necessarily playing the game, but it, it could. Yeah, yeah. It's basically we'll always talk about it's just going to be like a a focused episode. Yeah. Where we. Mention what we'll talk about, for example, building or painting, yep. and we just really dial in on that and give our tips as two casual amateur hobby homies. That's it. That's us. We'll share our do's and don'ts. And again, this is all just our opinion. Yeah. It's all we our got- experiences. Yeah. Yeah. So no we're guarantees. Gonna, we're not going to tell you to do something if we ourselves haven't done it. Yep. So, yeah. That's it. That's it. That's the episode. Yeah. Done. Because we've never done any building now. <laughs> um, nah. Well, my phone died. <clears throat> well, I've got the, uh, the all our research here okay. in front of me. All I've got is this small green army man that Shane bought from the room of vacuum vacuums. Cleaners. <laughs> and that's where the beer is kept. And I can tell the build quality on this individual is not good <laughs> at all. You could paint this, though. Could. Absolutely. Could. But that's not what this episode is no, about. No. What is it about, Shane? About building and modeling. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so t- today we'll talk about a few different topics, you know, things like uh, basing, conversions, uh, building. Like terrain. Terrain, yeah, yeah. Pinning, magnetizing, a few like sort of not advanced, but like a- out of the normal scope of things as well. So yeah. you're like you're not just cutting your model off the sprue and gluing it together. Correct. You know, there's things mold line removing and that sort of stuff. So. Yeah. I suppose we could probably start at pinning. Yeah. A lot of people, newer hobbyists, yeah. aren't going to know really know what pinning is. Let's take a journey. A journey through Just time. A journey through time. <laughs> to yesterday. <laughs> In the way, way back machine. Um, you've just bought a box of minis. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's Star Wars Legion. Let's say for this example, it's a Warhammer box. Yep. 
of something. Of space what? Space Marines. Space Marines. It's always Space Marines. What kind of Space Marines? Tactical Marines? Doesn't matter. It's whatever you want it to be. Although, in this example, it's Imperial uh, Stormtroopers. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the best kind of Space Marines. <laughs> uh, let's just say it's just uh, some Primaris Marines. Yep. Just some intercessors. If you don't know what that is, it's just like... It's just stock standard infantry. It's Terran from Starcraft. Yeah. <laughs> Although for legal reasons, no, it isn't. <laughs> um, so you just bought your box. You want, you know, you got to paint them. You know, you got to play with them. You've watched lots of videos on that. What do you do before then? Well, first thing you got to do is cut those bitches off. Oh yeah, clip them off the sprue. Clip them off the sprue because you open that box and you're like, "What the oh fuck God. is this on this frame for?" I thought they were built. Yeah. I thought they were on oh, the box. They were built and painted. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> Yes. yes. So you need to cut them off the sprue. Yep. Now, a few different methods for this. Uh, some poor souls don't know that there's things called cutters. Yeah. Cutters or scalpels. Yeah. Or exacto blades yeah. if you're American. Yeah. Exacto They're very whatever. exact. Yeah, yeah, they are. Um, some people just twist them off. Oh, yeah. And you can tell. Yeah. I remember that I've ordered some, like I've got some secondhand models before and there's this big chunk of Flashing, like sprue, yeah. scar, sprue leftover, whatever you call that. Yep. Little connecting thing that takes it from the main sprue to the model. Or if you're really unlucky, that happens to the sprue and you've got a massive crater on oh. your model's like shoulder or something like yeah. that. The old sprue scar. Yeah. 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 So the best thing to do is, is to cut them off with clippers yeah. or a blade. Yeah. Now, I've seen people say when you clip them off, clip them off a couple millimeters away from the actual model. Mm -hmm. So you've got that little bit of sprue. Yep. And then from there, grab your exacto blade. Yeah. <laughs> or if it's not that exact, just a regular scalpel. Yep. Or a mold line remover. Yeah. Well, not like the GW one. No, because like it's too big that like how much they leave on is too big. Oh, it's like a big yeah, chunk okay. of plastic. So if yep. you push it, it kind of just like... Just tears it off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So get like a nice sharp blade. Yep. You can get them for like four bucks from like... You can, from like the reject yeah, shop or like anywhere. Kmart. Yeah. And they're all super sharp. Yeah. We're not talking about those um, Stanley knife things that no, you like no, no. slide up. It looks and... like a surgeon's scalpel. Yeah. We'll post in the Discord <laughs> some links. Yes. Af Amazon affiliate links. Yeah. No, we're not that uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just send you some things that we have. Yep. Um, and so some people recommend doing that, like cutting it off a few millimeters away from the model, okay. leave that little bit of sprue, and then use the blade to cut the rest off. Yep. And I think they they say, like, if you try to use the blade, uh, sorry, the, the cutters, cutters um, to get as close to the model as you can, you always leave some. Yeah. But it's a minute amount so much that, like, that creates some sprue scarring. See, that's what I do. I, I always cut it off as close as I can, and then I Same. use a mold yeah. line remover yep. to just peel that extra bit off, mm. which... I can see why people would would cut it off with a few mil spare and then and then use a blade to cut it off. Yeah, because you you would get a better finish for less effort. I yeah, reckon. it does get tricky if it's like rounded or yeah. something. Because then you'd have to be pretty. You know, these knives are sharp. Yep. When you just buy them and take the lid off them. Oh yeah. Mine. I mean, again, cut away from yourself. We did speak about this in a previous episode. I still have the. Can you see that from where you're sitting? Yeah, I the can. Table? Yeah, from outside. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can see that. It stopped bleeding yesterday. <laughs> it's three Jesus weeks Christ. old. <laughs> so, yeah, cut away yeah. from yourself. Um, I haven't got one yet, but I would highly recommend, if you can, on your hobby surface, getting one of those, like, thick, you know, those green, like, gridded... Cutting mats. Cutting mats. Man, I got one of those. Yeah, you got one. Yeah. yeah. You get them, again, from almost anywhere. I can't even mm. think of where I got one from. Yeah. J-Car, sell them, I know that, like, because... People use them for like soldering and shit. But I think that's a big problem I have, and the reason I don't do that yeah. uh, more clean method of cutting it off further away from the model, and then I'm always cutting towards myself, yep. peeling it like it's a pear, <laughs> <laughs> is for that reason because I don't want to like cut, put it on the table and cut downwards. Yeah, because then I'll damage the the table even yeah. if it's just like my crappy trestle. I don't want to do that. No, nah. but you also blunt your blade too and your knife. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I should get one of those. I would recommend that. Yeah, they're they they're called a self healing cutting mat. Huh. They yeah. heal themselves. They do, yeah. How? Just like... Science. Cast, cast heal, dude. Just through... Yeah, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. How much mana? Uh, like 10. Wow. <laughs> yeah. They can do that all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. They never go um. That's amazing. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I would recommend... I think I would recommend that because I haven't done it. Mm -hmm. And what, what I'm doing right now isn't working for me. Cutting as close as possible. Yeah. And like just removing the excess. I get a lot of like scarring or, 
Yeah, it's just not clean. Yeah. So that's something yeah. I want to try. I think I'll try the same because, again, I don't do it. Yeah, but. you go. So, I mean, you play around with those two methods. That's yep. the two way of doing it. You're cutting your model off. You can try and get as close to the actual model as you can. You'll never get perfect. So no, you won't. There will always be, like, some extra sprue. Yeah. But it might be just, like, a quarter of a mil that you've just got to, like, yeah. mold line remove off. Um, or cut away from it and then use a scalpel to get, like, a clean finish. Yep. See what works for you. You might be like, nah, I'm accurate with my clippers. Boom. So the, those are the first two tools you'll need. Yeah. Some cutters, which you yep. can get, like, I use the GW. Yeah, I use the same. Only because i got, like, three. I don't know why. <laughs> I've got three. They're, like, like, 30 bucks each or something like that. You, well, can, you, you can buy them cheaper. Yeah. You could probably go to Kmart or Bunnings and buy them for, like, yeah. five bucks. Yeah. Or your hobby shop, you might sell them for, like, 15 maybe. But I wish I had some that had, like, a longer points because yeah. the, the GW ones are quite stout. Yep. So you can't really like get into the especially nooks. the new sprues. The yeah. new sprues they pack the models on, man. Yeah. Like for like generally a sprue is like a it's a standard size. They might be like two stuck together. Yeah. And like you can snap them in half. Yeah. For what you get on one of those sprues, back in the day you'd fit on like two. Yeah. So yeah. they're getting smaller and smaller and they're packing more and more stuff yeah. onto those sprues. Yeah. Which is great for us. It is great for us. It's, yeah, get more options. Yeah, all that yeah, stuff, but yeah, but it, it is harder to cut them out. I, yeah. I've same thing, man. Sometimes I cut away at the sprue just to get into there to cut the actual yeah. piece off. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So you know, you might find we use the GW ones because that's what we started with. Yeah, they, I mean, they're so durable. Yeah, yeah. The pair that I have now, one of the three pairs that I have now, <laughs> is the first one I bought when I got into the hobby, and I yep. still use that same one. I've got the same, but mine's a bit chewed out. Like the ends are a bit. How you going? Like, oh yeah. I couldn't. I can't use the very tip anymore to cut because okay. they're all. I don't know. Must have been cutting fucking steel or something. Yeah, with probably. Them, but... <laughs> probably threw them in your uh, tradies belt. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah, like, right. oh, we got a blown pipe here. I'll just fix this up with my sprue cutters. Yeah. That's it. Um, so I need. I need. I need new ones, but mate, I'll give you one of mine. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. I keep buying them when I think I've lost them, and then yeah, <laughs> and then you, you buy them and you go home and find it instantly. That's it, dude. Surefire way to find a missing tool it is buy, buy a new, new one. one. Yeah, yep. yep. Same with paint. Yeah. It's weird how true that is. It's yeah, yeah. True, it? no, 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 it's like a it's a glitch in the matrix. Yeah, I'm sure of it. Oh yeah, I blame Google. <laughs> oh, it's just it. it's my default uh, <laughs> default response when everything any something weird like that happens. Yep. Google. It's Google's fault. It's Google's fault. True. They Owns are listening to you. Yeah. And that's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Another thing we, we just heard us mention now is mold line removing. Yeah. So again, with with newer models, it's not so bad. They've, they've conveniently put the mold lines. Well, hang on. Mold lines. Yeah. Are a very, very thin line that runs down the side of the model, mm. which is where the two pieces of the mold join. Yeah. So there's always a little bit of plastic which will seep into those and create a very fine line. A straight line, you, you see what they are straight away because it's a line that shouldn't be there. Yeah. You The best thing to do to get your nose looking good is to clean that up. So mm. you can use like a mold line remover. You can use the back of a scalpel. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the blunt end of yeah. the blade yeah. to clean it up. It doesn't take much. You, you can see them. When you paint the model. Oh, uh, that's when you notice. That's when you notice them. And yeah. normally it's too late. Yeah. Because you've primed them. Yeah. You've built them. The best thing to do is to spend time when you're building your models. <laughs> this boy mold lines some... on that boy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, surprisingly, not bad. Yeah. But anyways. Anyways. I'm, I'm the plastic army man that we somehow found earlier. I'm just admiring its mold lines. Yes. But yeah, they usually run a run along like you find them on the outside of the arms and the outside of the legs yeah kind of like if you could cut the model from the head down in half in half yep that's, that's usually where they are be. yeah, yeah. So, and it is one of those things that like it's accentuated when you paint it so yep. if you look at it and you go oh yeah i can see it but it's not too bad just it's gonna get that, worse yeah exactly yeah it's worth just running a few yeah it doesn't take long <clears throat> no nah, so spend the extra time i hate building but mold line removing is my favorite part. It's it's somewhat like um, therapeutic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like when you're done, you go, "That's good. I like that." And then you yeah. do it again. So yeah, yeah. It's worth it's worth the time. It's it's uh it's like that Reddit. It's like that subreddit. Oddly satisfying. Yes. Just getting rid yeah. of that. Yeah. It's like yeah. now the model is complete. Yep. So it's good. It adds a lot to it. Yeah. Makes it easier to paint. Makes it look better when it's done. It's sort of the first thing. It's the thing that separates. Very rough hobbyists to like your semi-established ones. Yeah, yeah. You pick yeah. up a model and it's just littered with 
Um, oh, flashing and yeah. mold lines, and you like, can okay. see where they've like twisted it off the sprue. You're like, this, this, this is their first army yeah. or something. So if you want yeah. to take your game to that, if you want to step out of that yep. rookie <clears throat> rookie mode, yep, clean your mold lines. Clean your mold lines. Yeah. In the same in the same sentence, you can also talk about drill and barrels. Yes. Which is something I don't do. No. Very often. No, me neither. People like the you see those posts on Reddit. It's like drill your barrels. It's like drill your barrels. You don't have to pay your taxes. <laughs> Uh, make love dinner, to your wife. Make love to your wife. Last as long as you can. <laughs> Show up for work on Monday. Drill your, drill barrels. your barrels. Yeah, that's the big five. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Well, I see. I don't. I don't always drill my barrels. I. It, Whoa. I'll admit it looks good when it's done very, it very well. It does. But it can be hard to do very, very well. It can be hard to get a bang on center. Yeah. Yeah. I think it does look infinitely better. I have yeah. never done it myself. Yeah. Um. It's not hard to do if you've already got the if you're you're already magnetizing, yep. which we'll talk about in a moment, um, you'll already have the the tools for it. So it's yeah. like a and it's the kind of thing you can go through in a day and just rehash your models. Oh yeah, hundred percent. It doesn't matter if you drill over an already painted thing because you're drilling a hole. That's right. And you can always touch it up the inside with a bit of black or something yeah, like easy, that. Easy. Metallic, whatever. Yeah. But yeah. Uh speaking about magnetizing, yeah. It's it's addictive. I yeah, it I is. started my I was pretty late to my magnetizing venture. Mm-hmm. Uh, the best time to do magnetizing is when you've got weapons options. Yeah, it's like I don't know what to kit these guys out with because I like this gun, I like that gun. I don't know how. Yeah, kill, kill team's a prime example for me. Yeah, yeah. Because um, you can have your leader with a like I play tower mostly for my kill team. Mm-hmm. He's got a, a the assault weapon or whatever, it's a carbine or something. Yep. Pulse carbine. Yeah, you might want to change him to a pulse rifle or a or a shotgun or whatever. Like you can you can do that with magnetizing. Yeah, you yep. basically you drill out the arms and the and the torso, mm. glue in magnets. The difficult part is getting the the right um, polarization. It's getting the correctly north and south of yeah. your magnet. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, because I've done that a few times and I've glued it in the wrong way. Mm. It's tricky. Yeah, um, it's tricky. So the tools you need for so you've cut your dudes off now. You've removed their mold lines. They're looking pretty screw. good. They, yep. look, they look pretty good. You've put them into... You, uh, you sort of have to analyze the kit to work out whether or not you can even yep. magnetize. Yeah, it's true, yeah. For example, if you've got intercessors, and not a lot of... If you don't, you won't know what I'm talking about. I'll try and explain it. If you've got intercessors, their arms and guns are all the same. Your options come from a little part that attaches in the middle of the gun, and that'll either have a scope on it, which will make it a... Um, stalker rifle yep or you'll have a big um cartridge that An goes auto, on underneath auto bolt rifle correct yeah yep. or you'll yep. just have the normal yeah normal attachment in the middle that attachment itself doesn't have enough surface and thickness to be able to magnetize yeah and you can't magnetize the arms because that's the only arms you get for the model yeah so you know it's not like you can set up some arms unless you bought like a pack of 10 and only built five guys yeah then you've got an extra, you know, extra set of arms, but then yeah. You, you, the whole part of magnetizing is that you're gaining value. Yeah. Because you don't have to buy a whole nother kit if you want to change their weapons. You can just swap out the magnetized parts. Yeah. That's that's a fairly new kit, though. If you're looking at, like, an older set, like a Tactical Marines. Yeah. Your stock standard Space Marine. Yeah. Their arms and their guns yeah. are all up one joint. So yeah. you've got to you glue the legs to the torso, and the torso is basically just a torso. No arms, no legs, no head. Yeah. And then from there, with those big, massive surface areas where you would glue the arm yeah. to the torso, yeah. towers the same, smaller, much yeah. smaller. You can just fit a three mil magnet in there. Yeah. Um, but it's the same. It's a torso is all separate. So they're they're prime examples where you can. Yeah. And you can do it well. With your intercessors, are you unfortunately yeah. sort of limited. Yeah. The good thing about the intercessors is obviously you get you get ten guys. They give it to you in such a way that you could build it in two units of five, yep. which means you would have two sergeants. Oh, yeah. So that's where the magnetizing comes in handy because you don't know. Maybe in a game you want a, a squad of ten guys. Yeah. So one sergeant, but you have two now. Yeah. So what do you do? So you magnetize his sergeant arms with regular trooper arms. Oh, yeah. So then you can choose, all right, I don't need him to be a sergeant this game because I'm going to run him as a ten-man squad. Yeah. So I'll take his arms off, put on his normal... Bolt rifle. Yep. And now I got a pack of ten, a squad yep. of ten. Or if I want to split it off, I take off his normal bolt rifle and put on his sergeant arms, and now he's a leader. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so that's good. And in the the way that their kit, particular kit is, 
and this is, comes to analyzing the kit, seeing how they're built, is that you actually only need to swap magnetize one arm. Okay. Because he's got the oh, the sergeant has a single armed like it's holding the bolt rifle in the air. Oh yeah. So if you want to make it a sergeant, you just magnetize the other arm. Yep. And swap it for like a pointer or a yeah. Bolt. Uh, you could actually like keep it as a sergeant, but you if you run a sergeant, you want to keep it with the bolt rifle and the chainsaw. Yeah, yeah. So I've got a pointy arm for a normal troop or a chainsaw for the sergeant. Yeah. And that's all I've magnetized. Yeah. Two magnets. Wait, one, two, three magnets. Yeah. So we'll talk a bit about the magnets. You need the drill. The drill, yeah. So they're called a pin vice. It's basically like oh. a little hand drill. There you go. Yeah. So um, I've got a GW one, which comes with drill, drill bits, and they're small. They're fucking small. They're probably like half a mil, I reckon. Wow. The smallest bit. Wow. Pro- maybe even smaller. It's They're tiny. Damn. Man. They're tiny. Um, Mine's like 2.5 mil. Yeah. So your I borrowed yours. Yeah. For my three mil magnets, which oh, is yeah. perfect. Yeah, it's good for that. Yeah, and my one wouldn't run that big, that a bit that big. Yeah, okay. So I have to go to J car and buy one uh, the yeah. right size. Yeah. Um, but you've got to you've got to be pretty cl- careful when you, when you're drilling the mm. hole to glue the magnet into. Yeah. Number one is I like to drill a pilot hole, so it's a very very small hole. Interesting. To start with. Yeah. And then when you use your bigger bit. The tip of that bit's gonna find that hole. Yeah, okay. So That's people that idea. do like woodwork for and stuff. Accuracy. Yeah, for yeah. accuracy. People that do woodwork and metalwork will know like pilot holes are always a good idea. Yeah. Um for drilling holes because you're gonna you're gonna be able to use the bigger bit to line it up. Yeah. The small, from the smaller hole. So um the trick is a, a lot of these um hand drills is you can buy the same hand drill, use it for all these different bits, you can just tighten it. Yeah, yeah, you tighten but the end. The typical Magnets that you can buy easily, cheaply, get 500, 500 of them on eBay for like 30 bucks. Yeah. Or 15. Yeah, you got a good deal. Yeah, I got a good deal. Um, they're typically between two to three mil. Yeah. So they're a little bit, I guess, bigger. They're, they're the ones that you can't do those intercessor bolt parts yeah. for. Whereas if I had a, like, you know, 0.25 mil one, yeah. I'd be all over that. Yeah. Um, but they're also kind of the size that those magnets are strong enough to hold on arms. Yeah. If you start going down to one mil and lower, it's not going to hold the arm. Nah. No. Um, so what do you look for when you get magnets? So jump on eBay or wherever. Yep. Maybe there's like a magnet shop near you. Yeah. You're looking for rare earth magnets. Some hobby shops sell them. Yeah. The d- the width and depth are important because the depth obviously will be dictated to you by the model itself. Yeah. You might not be able to go three mil deep yeah. because the shoulder... Is the shortest big part is two mil. My my tower is a prime example. I can, like I said, I can just get my three mil magnets in there, which are three by one. So they're one mil deep. Yeah, yeah. So they're real tiny. They're real yeah. small. Yeah, and they they are strong enough to hold them on pretty well. Because like, they got that bigger surface. Because they got the bigger surface area. Yeah. I use the same magnets on my my um, Death Company yeah. Jump Pack uh, Blood Angels. Yeah, like I they were the ones that I glued in the wrong way like one arm one side sticks while one side's pushing uh, away so yeah. it works yeah but like just yeah you know yeah. like that was the very first time i magnetized yeah so if you're looking to try magnetizing this is what i did i grabbed some magnets that were two by ones yep. so two mil wide one mil thick because i knew that was going to go into most things yeah um there's different strengths and i think n50 is kind of like the stronger of the Okay. Yeah, so I just grabbed the N50s. Yep. So two mil by one mil, N50, rare earth magnets, grabbed like 200 of them, grabbed a two mil drill bit yep. for my little hand drill, and that's perfect for like most things. Yeah, yeah, it is. It really um, is. And at, at least it lets you like practice with it. But the trick is make sure you keep track of your north-souths yes. on the magnets. I made a little tool for that. Interesting. So what it was, it's just a bit of dowel because I use some dowels, like wooden dowels, like round bits of wood. Yeah. Like long, round. Yeah. I can't explain any better. Cylindrical. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they're at Bunnings. Yeah. Um, I bought some of them because I made some like trees for a diorama. Okay. As the trunk. Yeah. So I had a few left over. So I cut one short to about three inches, four inches, and I glued a magnet. What's that in um, normal person? 
normal person, like seven centimeters, okay, seven and a half cool. centimeters. Check it. <laughs> <laughs> What's that in good? <laughs> What's that in efficient? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I glued a magnet on one side and a magnet on the other, obviously, so they're opposing. Okay. And then what I would what I did was I wrote like body on one side, like which is the body of the model. Yeah. And I know the other side I didn't write anything, but that's with the weapon. Yeah, okay. So or the, whatever you're throwing on the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The body side will always go into the model. Yeah. And the weapon side the other side will always go into the weapon. So I know that they're always gonna fit. Yeah, cool. It's a good idea. Yeah, I just tried I just to fucking wing it. Because they all stick together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they all stick together and yeah. like a long stick, right? The magnets. Yeah. So that's what I did with the death company. I just like glued them in. Yeah. And like I must have picked it up upside down once and fucking just glued it in. And yeah. then next minute they're not they're not going together, right? They're yeah. they're off they yeah. Yeah. And then I was Look, if that does happen. It's it's tough to recover from because yeah. you've super glued it in. Oh yeah, she's in there. Can't really get it out. I got a couple out once. Oh nice. Use a really small drill, drill it in, and then like just punched it in. Fucking jimmy it out. Yeah, if it's in the body part, you can actually like just punch it into the rest of the body. Yeah. If yeah. you've drilled all the way through. Anyways. Yeah. In that situation, grab super glue and just like you've get give up on the magnets. Yeah. If you can't get it out, just glue the arm together. Super glue the arm to the body. Yeah. And. There you go. That's your sergeant. Maybe you'll hit the next one. Yeah. You know, like it, your model's not done. That's a good thing. Like, if you if you stuff up, you can just grab out the super glue and it's a set model now. Yeah, you won't be able to magnetize no. it, but it's not ruined. So there's very little. There's low risk, high reward for magnetizing. Yeah, yeah. And it is good, just like for you know, metas change all the time. So if it's like, for example, the next thing I'm magnetizing is my Star Wars Legion. Walkers, oh, the ATRTs, because yeah. yeah. they got three attachments and they just like slot in there. Yep. I don't have to glue one in there because then I'll find out that the flamethrowers are the best. Yeah. So then I will like cut the other one off, glue the flamethrower in, and then I'll find out that the laser's the best. So <laughs> prime candidate. Um, those ones are easy because they're like, uh, I guess, a dick that slots in the hole. <laughs> So I just cut that dick in half and put a magnet on one oh, half. Don't do that. Yeah. Nah, man, I'm savage. Um, I mean, if you've got the length, why got, not? Yeah, exactly. There's a bit of length on there, so yeah. I've got some to spare. Um, so that's that's a that's an easy one. Yeah. But, you know, no drilling needed on that one. Um, I'd, I'd say I'd say have a trial model, something yeah, yeah. you're not scared to lose. You won't lose it, but not scared well, if it goes monopose. Yeah. You know? I I didn't have a trial model, and that's why I fucked up my death company. But what I did do was I just got two bits of sprue, okay, and just drilled it and glued it in, like just to yeah. get the yeah yeah fair you know enough. the oh, what do you call it like just the action and the yeah. and the process right yeah yeah um and work on the technique work on the technique. I didn't drill the hole deep enough, and like I sort of I learned a lot from just magnetizing two bits of sprue together. Yeah, nice. That's you a know, good idea. yeah. I was, I'm a little bit more reckless, so I just kind of like. I was, oh. Threw it, just threw it together. Balls to the wall, man. I've never pilot holed. <laughs> I've never tested. Sometimes I don't even check the north south. It's 50 50, man. Clearly more reckless cutting dicks in half. Yeah, yeah true. I mean, I mean, what are they for? What else are they for? <laughs> I'm not using it. Have a listen to this guy, everyone. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's a, and it's a big tool. Like, especially if you might be a guy that money's not, not a problem. Yeah. So, you know, fuck magnetizing. Yeah. Why would you? But also, on that note, ease of painting. This is yes. something that relates yeah. to our last episode of the Hobby Corner. Hey, we said we wouldn't talk about painting. Well, I'm going to break that rule. Okay. Multiple times this episode. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, yeah. You can you can magnetize the arms. That way you can paint the torso and the gun separate. Yep. And then just sub that bad boy on there. You know what? I wish... I, yeah. I wish I had done that for my most recent uh, intercessors. Yeah. Because now I've got the, the pieces separate. Yep. But then you have to prime them separately, and it's it's sometimes priming tiny parts is difficult. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah, no, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> so that's magnetizing. Have a play around. If you need any help, any advice, I've done. I've actually done it a ton, and I'm super confident in yeah. it. So hit us up on the Discord. Shoot us an email. Hobby homes yeah. at Gmail. Just ask us a question. I don't know what's on YouTube. Like as far as um like. Demos and and yeah, help like either. YouTube video go like that, but just looked on eBay. Yeah, grabbed the magnets, went to yep. Bunnings, grabbed the drill. Yeah, went home, and drilled some stuff. Yeah, it's actually it's pretty, it's good and yeah. it's rewarding. It feels good. But what you mentioned before about ease of painting reminds me of sub assemblies. Yes, which is a very, I mean, that's part of building. Yeah, you're getting the model ready. Maybe you've decided you won't magnetize it, yep. but you would like that ease of painting. Yeah. What should I do, Shane? Oh, that build sub assemblies, dude. Oh, how do don't I do just, that? Don't just build it all together at once. Oh. 
put together pieces that you know is going to fit and you know that's not going to affect when you do glue it all together. Prime example is don't glue your arms on. Oh, yeah. Like I didn't. Like you didn't. Yeah. Exactly. So that way you can paint the chest. Um, it's it's all like it's all to do with um, finding those difficult spots. Like I like to paint my models off the base, for example. Yeah. Which is, it's not a sub-assembly, but in a way you it could maybe is. think of it yeah. as one. Yeah. That way you can paint, you know, up all the dick and balls uh, without right. getting... You know, so your crass. brush, <laughs> you know, your brush <laughs> struggling to get there because you've got it on a 30 zoom or base or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, Some assemblies is the same. You know, you can get into those hard to reach places like under shoulders and, and, and behind capes and stuff like that. Like, yeah, yeah, I struggled. I, I ages ago built my Stormcast Liberators, right? Yep. And I'm like glued them to the base and, and it's sort of hard to get up, up in there. In those hard to reach in places. In those hard to reach places. Yeah. I did leave the shields off, which I'm happy because it means you can paint everything and glue the shield on. Yeah. Um, which means you can highlight some pretty cool places and, and it just makes the model look better. You yeah. Know, you haven't just got blank, blank empty spots where you've missed because you couldn't get your brush in there. Yeah. A lot and of people say like, if you can't get your brush in there, you can't see it, which is somewhat true. Mm. Not always the case. Like yeah. sometimes just that little bit, oh yeah, I can see a tiny little highlight in there. Yeah. It just adds to it. And it, it depends on you, obviously. Like maybe you're, you're like, maybe you're that you share that sentiment where you're like, ah, uh, if I can't put a brush in there, then I don't care as much about it yeah because it's hard to see yeah i would argue that some people don't want to put the brush in there because they'll bump yes other parts of the model yep so like yeah i can get a brush in there yeah it's just so hard and it's going to do, undo some of my prior painting yeah that i would just prefer not to so people can see the bottom of the chest crest yeah but and they can see that it's not painted but yep. they'd have to pick up the model and investigate that's where your tabletop comes in if you're just painting to a tabletop standard yeah from the tabletop, you're not going to see that the bottom of that totally. acrylic is not painted. Totally. If you're painting a display piece that you want to really show off and be proud of, yeah, a hundred percent, you got to subassemble it. Yeah, you got to leave the the arms off. You got to leave the head off. It just depends on you. If you're fine with someone picking it up and seeing like parts that aren't necessarily painted, yeah, and maybe you know some people like it. That it's just black. It's the primer color. Yeah, because it's the darkest part of the model. It's kind of like a be. shadow in a yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe maybe you're like I wouldn't waste my time subassembling. Yeah. Because I sh- you know they share that sentiment. But some people go to the other extreme where they they paint on the sprue. Oh, on the sprue, yeah. And you know each to their own. Jesus, that's a boy. So Shane's just cracked a beer and it is froth. It's dripping in every place. It's dripping off the can, off his hands, <laughs> off his chin. It's e- it's everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere. It's like it's raining in here. Well, that's a pretty good... Yeah, That was a boy. On, you opened up your throat on that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. satisfying... <laughs> was yeah. it? I hope it was a satisfying... <laughs> of the water hitting the ground. <laughs> I'm wearing actually, it. Yeah. I'm yeah, wearing you it. are. <laughs> yep. Good thing with these towels here. <laughs> <laughs> Every week we're wet. <laughs> Usually it's from the humidity and the heat. But I know. Yeah. Oh, it's going again. When it's not humid, it's beer. It's beer. Anyways, while Shane's busy uh, cleaning himself up there... Choking on a long neck. <laughs> I've seen that scene before. With the... <laughs> um, Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, so they paint on the sprue. Yeah. You know, each to their own. Some people love it. You know, you've got this oh, big sprue. Yeah, I'm not a fan either. I've done it before, though. Yeah? And I didn't hate it as much as I thought I would. Okay. I've never done it again, though, so that, that says all it needs to say. <laughs> Some people like having the actual sprue itself as, like, you know, you've got this big thing you can hold. Yeah, you're not trying to hold one tiny little bit like an arm. No, and you can usually get in on every single angle. Yeah. You can prime the whole, th- you know, you can hold the sprue and prime the whole thing. Yeah. There's no tricky part about that. So you save a lot of time there. So I can see its merits. Yeah. Um, obviously, when, like, you paint it all and you clip it off the sprue, you're going to have little bits of grey plastic. You're going to be doing a lot of touch-ups. Yeah, it's a it's a yeah. touch up thing. Because you've got a mold line, remove it too. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So, they usually do that on the yeah, on the sprue. Yeah. So and that's a little bit tricky to get to. So I mean Each I to tr- their own. I tried it. Yeah. You should try it too. Because you might depending on the kit, there might be some kits that you just like, oh you know, all those bits that you cut off are hidden. Yeah. So why worry about it kind of thing? Yeah. They're behind a cape or, you know, under an arm or whatever. So maybe it's worth um, I'd give it a go if I were you, just to see if it saves you more time than it costs you touching up. Yeah. Or if maybe you like touching up and like spending that extra detail on at the end. Yep. Give it a whirl. It's not something I wouldn't do it. 
Yeah. But I could see why people do. I suppose it's like everything. It's got its own benefits here and there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you just need to wait out. You need just to another tool up. in the arsenal. Yeah. That you may it. or may not use. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Did we did we talk much about pinning earlier? I think we just jumped no. the gun to magnetizing, didn't we? No, you were talking about pinning, but I wanted to bring it back. Oh yeah, we, we went way way box. back. Yeah. yeah. So and then you, we went right past it. Yeah. So now you know magnetizing. <laughs> now you know painting on the. Oh, we talked about painting. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. You're talking about uh, sub assembly. Yep. Pinning's a part of that. Pinning's a part of that. You've got your model now. You've built it. Yeah. Maybe. 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 Maybe sub assembly. Maybe it's sub assembly. But how? If it's not all one piece, how then do I paint it, Shane? <laughs> well, <laughs> if it's sub assembly, what do I hold? <laughs> that's that's uh, yeah, that's a battle in itself. Yeah, I like to use blue tack. I thought we were talking about pinning. Oh yeah, and pinning. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> pinning was originally used back in the day. Here we go. For our ancestors. Back in back in <laughs> 600 BC. <laughs> yeah, pinning was used when models were made from metal. Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. hold arms on, to hold, to add strength to joints, basically. Yeah. Instead of just super gluing it, because you couldn't plastic glue that shit. No. No, no, no. No. Pin it. So, you'd well, normally you'd just super glue it, mm. and then every arm would break off every yeah. time. Yep. So people would use their drill, <laughs> their little pin vise they use for their magnets. Yeah, okay. And drill a small hole in each joint. Right. I, I do a lot of pinning when I paint my models off their base. Yeah. Because okay. I'll texture the base, I'll paint the base. And then I want to glue the model to the base. Yeah. Instead of just gluing flat foot to a flat base. Yeah. Where there's not a lot of surface area. Yeah. And sometimes and it, it be... looks like it's almost floating. My yeah. space wolves look like that. They're standing yeah. on rocks, but there's so much of a gap because they're standing on the rocks and not. Yeah. Yeah. What you can do is you can drill into the bottom of the foot mm. and you can, I, I like to use paper clips. Yeah, okay. So I'll use my, my GW drill with the smallest I drill say, bit. I say, my GW paper clips. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> GW approved paper clips, <laughs> which you can buy for $58. $58. <laughs> for five. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'll, um, I'll drill a hole in the foot. I'll cut a paper clip down and uh, glue the paper, the paper clip mm. into the foot Yeah, with super glue. Once that's dry, which doesn't take long, I'll do the same thing to the base. I'll drill a hole in the base, and then I'll I'll glue that paper clip from the foot into the base. I see. So that's like I I used to do like both feet. Yeah. But then it was hard to like get the holes to line up properly and get it like a real good fit. So I used to like one foot. Yeah. Okay. You do get that issue, like you said, where it's kind of like floating sometimes. But that happens if you're going to super glue it on there, anyway. It does. Yeah. The good thing is with pinning is like. I mean, I suppose you could do this with super gluing. You can sort of like clear a spot and throw the pin in there. Yeah. I've seen people do better connection to bases with pinning, but I haven't looked into it because yeah. I'm just like, that sounds like a lot of work. Yeah. But I see people do pinning for everything. Like if they're painting helmets. Oh, they'll yeah. They'll drill, drill a hole in the bottom of the helmet yep. and they'll pin it and they'll prime it on the It gives pin. you something to hold as well. Yeah. When, you, when you're padding in those sub-assemblies. Sometimes it, you just want something to hold. <laughs> when you're lonely, it's a Tuesday night. This is true. <laughs> just need someone to hold. Yeah. So pinning is good for that. Yeah. Yep. What about um, basing? You know, we're talking about printing models to bases. Yeah. Oh. What do I you mean, do for your bases? Oh, just a myriad of different things. Yeah. Um, so typically I'll, I'll build the model, uh, usually in like as big a chunks as I can. So my sub-assemblies will usually consist of two separate pieces, sometimes three if I'm feeling randy. Oh, yeah. okay. Yep. Which is usually like if it's a model, it's usually like arms are separate, it's maybe the head separate. Yep. Sometimes if it's wearing like a cape, I'll do top half, bottom half. Yeah. Separate. Yep. You know things like that. Like your Skitari. Yeah, exactly. Yep. To get into those capes, so it's just much easier to like yep. do top half. Anyway, so once I finish them though and put them together, the basing varies significantly. If I, while I'm painting that model, want to like hold the base. Or put the base in like a, what do you call those, butt plug things? Yeah, yeah, the paint handles. Paint handles? Yep. Instead of gluing it to it, because I know I still got to base it, yep. I'll just grab like real thin double-sided tape. Oh, yeah. And cut off like tiny little things. and Yeah, yep. The How does that work? Phenomenally. Yeah? Yeah, it's, yeah. Yep. And it's just like little $2 tape I got from like the hardware store. Yeah. And it's like as thin as the... You know, that crappy tape you use for, like, your Christmas presents and stuff? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That real thin stuff? It's yeah. just that, but double-sided. Okay. So, I'll, like, put them on that, and then it's 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 not it's better than blue tack. Yep. Um, it's blue tack sometimes, you know. 
you know, blue tack. Yeah. It's a bit yeah, finicky. Yeah. It yeah. heats up or whatever. Sometimes it becomes soft and bottles fall over. Yeah, yeah. This is way better than that. So that's my go-to for doing nice. that. And then, yeah, I just take the model off and scrape off the double-sided tape and then I'll base it. Yep. So I just want to get the base done quick. I've usually got a pile of sandy rocks that yep. I've got from wherever, <laughs> which consist of like real fine dust almost. Yep. Then the next one up, which is like real fine sand. And then there's like a few bigger rocks in there. Yep. And then I've got a separate thing of like big pebbles. Yep. And when I say big, I mean like instead of like sand. Yeah. It's like four mil. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes five. But to scale of the model, that's like that's yeah. a big old rock. Yeah, it's a big old boulder. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I've got that separately. So I'll grab the base, slap the super glue down, put the big boulders on first. Yep. Sit the base on top of my little pile of crap and then just pour it on. Yeah, yeah. Press it down a little bit, take yep. it off, shake it off. There you go, that what one's done. What glue do you use? I just use like PVA. Yeah. You got to use PVA. Yeah, yeah. I use the GW PVA, PVA actually. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> because I when I went in there, I was surprised that uh, there's a hobby shop I also go to and their prices were comparative. Really? So I was like, hmm, yeah, I don't know. I so, use the Bunning Special, man. How much is that? Uh, I don't even much. know how much the GW one is. So yeah, I, compare it, I but... feel like the GW one's like nine bucks. Yeah, Bunnings one's uh, it's less than half that. Yeah, okay, and you get more. Yeah, no, I don't know. I'm yeah. already in GW buying models. Yeah, so. yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like their PVA. I think it, you know, yeah, it's a PVA. PVA. It's PVA. Yeah. It takes ages to dry. So when you do PVA your models, does. you're leaving it overnight. Yeah, but that's fine. You can you can thin it with water, and okay. it does dry a bit quicker. Yeah, but. I'll just you commit know, myself. You I'm may like, as well yeah, leave it overnight. Day. It's yeah. base weekend. <laughs> yeah. I've already painted the models typically because I sort of paint them first, do the base last because yep. I, I want to see how the models look with all their colors and everything and try and think of what would complement that. Yeah. Because yeah, it's, it's one thing to think about it, but sometimes I'll see a unit and go, oh, I was originally planning on doing like gray, yep. muted colors, but I reckon orange would be a banger. So, you oh, know, right. until you see all 10 of them or whatever. That's when I decide what colors I want to do the bases. True. That's true. But I usually just stick with real basic, like, sandy rocks kind of stuff. Because, yeah. you know, sometimes when you're in on a battlefield and you've got, like, stone pillars or, like, a street and you're in the middle of a forest, I'm like, ah, it just doesn't feel right. Yeah, it's hard. Whereas stones always feel relevant. Like, yeah. if I'm in the middle of a street, I'm in the st- I'm on a gravel it's road. Gray. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So I usually stick to that. But uh, GW has some phenomenal, like, Texture paints like yep. the what is that Martian Martian Iron Crust or yeah. Iron Earth or something, something like, like that? that. It's just the phenomenal. crackle one. Yeah, yeah. Any crackle paints are just bangers because yeah. like you slap one thick coat on, yeah, the hobby homies way. That's it. And you know you leave that overnight and it eventually crackles and pulls apart and it looks yep. like you spent hours on it. They got sands, the mud's great. Yep. You know they got heaps of good ones. So I stick to those basics. I'm yeah, not much nice. of a base guy. Yep. I'm not like you <laughs> with your cork and your... Oh, man, I dig that base shit. Your South Atlantic uh, <laughs> glacier. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my my basing, um, I started off with just gluing sand to bases, like mm. just like regular sand. I'll use corks. I'll tear them up, make them look like rocks as well. Yeah. I was happy with that. Yeah. And then I started using things like um, basing mediums or yep. what do they call it? Um, yeah. I think it's called a basing medium. Warlord Games makes one. Oh, uh, yeah. Basing render. That's what they call it. It's just like, oh, I don't even know what it is. It's just like, it's a tub, kind of like a tub of butter almost and you just scoop it out, oh. slap it on the base. Ooh. It's got, yeah, <laughs> it's got glue and sand and yep. all kinds of shit in it. Little rocks. And, yeah, okay. And a it just dries like real hard, rock hard, and in the in the process, I'll like build it up with cork. I'll slap yep. that shit on there. Cool. I'll like stick some like little things in there. Yeah, man, basing is like a it's like a whole episode. Oh man, yeah, I could like you could, for hours. You could do green stuff, and you know how people like they'll they'll just get some thick green stuff, smooth it out over the base, so it creates a like thin layer. Yeah, they'll get like a. I mean, they'll cut cobblestone oh, in there. Oh, yeah, or, a or textured you, rolling pin. Yeah, you can get rolling pins that have like, or just like stamps. Yeah. That you just put in there and boom, cobblestone, yep. boom, street corner, boom, rocks, whatever. Yeah. Boom, river river formation, you know. They're, there's snow, there's, ri- you know. Your basings, are, it's a whole other, you can you can get it like tabletop, like just sand and yeah. and slap a few tufts of grass on there. Yeah. Or you can go full on diorama. Yeah. And you can have it. With like like river water effects, yeah. 
You can have like little reeds in there. You could even 3D print some like tiny little fish and put them in there. Like, but it's do you, I feel like it might be the biggest uh, time to looks value. Yeah, Does that makes sense. Yeah. you know, like if you spent three hours on a model, you know, you you just painted a nine hour model for example, which looks phenomenal. <laughs> Thank but you. But three hours is like a third of a model done. Yeah. If it's a real simple model, maybe it's the whole model done. Yeah. But you, if you spent three hours on, you could do 10 bases and they would look phenomenal. Oh, yeah. They would look amazing. Yeah. If you spent 20 minutes on a base, it would look insane. Yeah, definitely. So they're like really good time commitment to quality looking yep. value. It's a real easy way to up your models. Yeah. Like uh, aesthetics. Yeah. We actually, we, we joke about it because like... We've gone to a few tournaments with people with these insane paint jobs that they've spent hours on, and people yep. pick them up and go, "That's a sick fucking base." Yeah, and, and yeah. it's just like it's just like a you know a texture paint or yeah, whatever. Yeah, that they've like it's like that Gene Steeler Army. Exactly. We talked about episode yeah. like one or something. Yeah, yeah. It happens so often. Yeah. So you know, if you're gonna put time in, put it into the base. Yeah. Maybe that's your jam. I reckon that's your jam, Shane. Oh yeah, that's my jam. Some people just like they groove it. I'll contrast up the rest of the bish, but I'll yeah. make this base. Oh. oh, my God. Yeah. I'll make base it look like a base. Bang it. Yeah. yeah. And you know people will pick it up and they'll be like, sick base, dude. Yeah. Yeah. They won't even see the model on there. That's one thing I go for. Yeah. Is a nice base. Like, I went out of my way with this Lord Relic that I painted and, mm. like, put a, like, a uh, combing through people's gardens, finding bushes and shit that, like, look to scale and Yeah, you stole a dude's uh, lawn. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you stole a dude's tree. <laughs> yeah. Chase me down the street. Yeah. You okay, though? You're, you're all good? Yeah. yeah. Didn't catch you. Nah. You get too quick for him. Yeah, too quick. Too, too nimble. Too agile. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, um, as I mean, in that sort of breath, you can talk about terrain. Spacing is, is one form of terrain. Yeah. Basing and terrain, another thing that they both have in common is that you will find yourself absolutely blown away with how sick they look after a dry brush. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's all it takes. A, you don't need to spend hours painting it. No. Spend much time as you can building it. Yeah. When you paint it, slap on a base coat, slap on a wash, and mm. dry brush the shit out of that base. Yeah. And you're laughing. Half an hour, I did 10 Space Wolves snow bases that yes. I think oh, were great. Oh, man, they look awesome. They took nothing. Yeah. You know, half an hour. Yeah. That's nothing. I just dipped them in some rocks, primed them in black, dry brushed them like a light gray. Yep. Dry brushed them a lighter gray. Yep. Touched them up with a white. Oh, All dry yeah. brush. And, you know, you got 10, 10 in front of you, so you're just, like, you're just slapping that brush just around. you assembly line you're on that shit. Yeah, you're closing yeah. your eyes, and you're just, you're just throwing the brush around. Spanking it. Spanking it. Yep. And then after all that was done, I grabbed some of the um, GW Snow Blizzard. Yep. What is it? I don't know what the Blizzard stuff is called. Valharian yeah, Blizzard Yeah, something, something like that. Yeah. And just sort of, like, patched that on. and so, You know, so it was, like, melting snow yep. over these rocks. And like, yeah, spent no time on it. They look sick. They're yeah. like the best bases I've done. So those they are were the ones. So good. They made me go, mate, I need to spend more time on bases. Yeah. Because 10 minutes extra on a model is like, yeah, you highlighted the shoulder. Yeah. 10 minutes extra on a base is like, well, it's, it's top tier. Yeah, yeah. A good model will get brought down if it's just standing on a blank base. Yeah. Or a base that's like, covered in like paint splotches from where you've painted the model. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you just put some sand on it, yeah. just wash it, dry brush it. Yeah. Put some snow on there. Put a tuft of grass on there. Yeah. You buy those pre-made tufts. I dig uh, them. I use them all the time. Tape. Yeah. You just a bit of super glue. They've already, they're already adhesive, but a bit of super glue just to make sure it sticks on there. Yeah. Slap a couple on there. Push Done. them in the rocks. Yeah. So good. That's right. So good. Have a bit of a play. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and terrain works the same way. You, you, you know, it's easy to make something that's like five minutes of effort. Yeah. Look like... It's, it's, you spend hours on it. And it's the cheapest part of the hobby. Yeah. All it really of it. is. Ter like, terrain, like making your own terrain is cheap. Yep. In retrospect, buying your own terrain is pretty decent. Yeah. It depends 3D on printing what you buy. 3D printing is a way to go nowadays, which yeah. I think that almost earned an episode in itself. Oh, yeah. We'll talk about, about that. that. Yeah. But I 3D but, printed a bit of terrain. But you can usually get 3D terrain online yeah. pretty cheap because people are just pumping out of their printer. They're yeah. They're not going to charge you an arm and a leg for it. That's right. But basing the rocks. And sticks, just dig they up don't from die. your garden. Yeah, yeah. Right out of the park. Dig up, you know. Take a little doggy bag with you, a little Ziploc bag. Take some sa some sand. Take some rocks. Yep. Take some twigs. Those ten ba no, actually, twenty bases I did. Yep. Because I did the ten intercessors on twenty. What are they on? 
28? 32. 32. Yep. And then I did the Dogers, uh, Fenris and Wolves, they 10 of them. 40 or something. They're yeah. the bigger one. All of those cost me whatever the Blizzard cost. Yeah. And the PVA cost. Yeah, yeah. Not even the full price PVA. No. You know, I'm using like a tiny Just little bit of it. Of yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So probably 10 bucks for those yeah. 20 bases. I've I've made I've got an old ice cream container yeah. full of sand in that. Yeah. I've, I've gotten black Texan wrote basing mix on it, so I don't know what it yeah. is. Yeah. That's gonna last me the rest of my life. Oh, easy. And I've got some sand from a fish tank. Yeah. Some sand from a reptile enclosure. Yeah. And some fucking big rocks that I bought at like a an Asian two dollar shop. Yeah. For like two bucks, and it's gonna last me forever. Yeah. 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 Basing's just invaluable. Yeah. Spend little time, little money. And it's, it feels like when you look at it, it's 50% of the model. Yeah. Even though you know you spent like barely, you know, you spent like a tenth of the time. That's one thing which I suppose we might touch on is um, you don't want it to take away from the model. No. You want your model to be the, the centerpiece, but the base mm. to complement it. Or hmm, maybe if you had like a basic Bish model, you yeah, know, like a, something yeah. bo- like a cultist that's true, all in muted true. colors. A, a character or a hero would, would yeah. you would want your to stand yeah. out on the model. Keep them at like muted colors. So yeah. Then, yeah. But basically, you just want it to contrast with your yeah. model. Yeah, that's right. That's one big thing they say is like if you're painting a dark model, paint a light base. Mm-hmm. Painting a light model, paint a dark base. It'll yeah, they'll complement each other. They'll make the other one pop. Yeah. If you're painting a black model and he's standing on a really dark base, it's all gonna blend in together. And like yeah, it might look great. Yeah. But it's not gonna pop as much as it will. When you're painting, like, yeah, vice versa, a light base and a dark model. An example of that is, uh, like, I, I've got Tyranids and I was looking at a few jungle themes. Oh, yeah. And so they paint the Tyranid in these, like, bright, jungly colors that yep. look really cool. They look poisonous. They're greens. They're yellows. Like, they're browns. Like a, like a poisonous frog kind of color. Exactly. Like, yeah. But then their base are these bright greens and jungle as well. And you kind of don't know where one starts and the other begins. And yep. you kind of just, it just looks like a, you know... It just looks, it would be, yeah, contrast it well. Because if yep. they're both so busy, you don't know where to look. Yeah. You know, it's just like art, I guess. Um, yeah. But yeah, so, and that's why I always like to like um, double side tape my model, paint yep. it first, see what they all look like together, and then decide. Yeah, decide on your base then. That's what I did with the wolves that I yep. painted orange like foxes. I was like, what complements something so bright like orange and white? A dark base. Dark. Yeah. You know, white, black. Man, those wolves literally jump off their bases. Yeah, they do. They, they are if so If I good. drop them, oh, yeah. boom, they're jumping off. <laughs> but they're so with your intercessors as well. That that Space Pool's blue you've painted them. Um, yeah. It's gonna. It's just going to leap off that base. My so 2020 good. army, I'm pretty happy with. Yeah, Because man. we put all these, these things that we're talking about is what we've recently found is working for us. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. Basing is key. Yeah. And those 100%. bases took me no time. Yep. Terrain, that's sort of your jam. Yeah, I dig a bit of terrain. I built a fair bit of terrain back in the day. That's the first thing you did, really. It really was, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like. uh, You got some Necrons Necrons. and you're like, all right, now I need a bait. I need terrain. You made a table. Yeah. Built a table. Two by two. Oh, I built a gaming table, six by four gaming table. Yeah. But I also built a two by two um, display board out of modular terrain. Yep. First thing you did, you're like, oh, I don't know how to play Warhammer, but modular terrain. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And it was sick, dude. I started off with. I think they're uh, six inch by six inch, 15 mm. centimeter by 15 centimeter. They're still good. You could Swears. throw them on the table now. Yeah, they fit in. Kill right. Team. Yeah. They're perfect, man. Well, that's what I started making them for. Before Kill Team, there was Shadow War Armageddon. True. Which was seventh edition. Yeah. Almost Kill Team, but yeah. not. Yeah. Um, I made a, it was kind of like, I was going for like an underhive. Before Necromunda again re- was re-released, I was going for like an underhive theme, so it's like you nailed it. It's like rusty, rusty walkways and yep. pipes with like green shit pumping out of them. If you and- could bottle tetanus and put it in a location, <laughs> yeah. your I place. Remember playing on that yeah, yeah, you would have. Yeah, yeah, that was when I was into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I reckon we did. I reckon we did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And your Skatari Ranger threw a grenade like under the um, walkway he was standing on. Yeah. We're like, uh, look, it's possible, but yeah. the rules don't allow it, but let's do it on a six. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, and it didn't go off. It didn't go off, but we yeah. were ready to allow it. We were ready to allow that, yeah. I just remember every time we played, and this is just like the the the, the that guy in me, Yeah. that you just couldn't beat my uh, Tyranid Warriors. Oh, yeah. I don't know if they were busted or if we were playing wrong, but I stopped 
It's a shame because I stopped playing them for yeah. that reason. It's like, well, this is just like a free win. Yeah, yeah. They felt busted. Three of these like unkillable monsters. They had like three wounds, which was insane. Yeah. You know what? I think we didn't play the hit the hit rules, something if you hit them. Anyways, that's Oh, a, pinned and all that that's shit. That's right. We yeah, didn't do pinned. Yeah. You know, obviously, like, you yeah. could have pinned three of my guys easily. Yeah. But we didn't play it. You know, we yeah. still learn. Anyway, the terrain uh, was the sick. The terrain, yeah, yeah. I just went for that terrain. Like, I got, yeah. like, this, like, I got this um, dude from actually South Australia to, like, hot wire cut me all these foam panels that, I, that you could get from Bunnings. Oh, yeah. That's right. I remember that. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, oh, it's just, like, extruded polystyrene, I think it is. Yeah. Um, just a surface to slap it all on. Yeah, yeah. And I built, like, a like a concrete block out of them and then from there I built using granny grading which is like you buy from Spotlight it's um, cross stitch mesh I think it's called yeah um, dude you had so much going on you oh, had pipes yeah. I was dripping fucking, ooze dude I was cutting rivets like yeah. I'd buy like a box of like a hundred pins and cut the head off the pins to make bullet to casings make, and stuff oh that was something different yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But I, right, you've done corrugated everything. iron and We'll post pictures of Shane's old terrain. Yeah. The first terrain he did in his, like, first six months of the hobby. Yeah, up in, in the Discord. Discord. Yeah. yeah. Jump on it. It's sick. I actually posted it. I thought it was so cool. I posted it to Reddit. Yeah. Oh, got, yeah. Like, you um, stole my upvotes. <laughs> I did. I did. I was like, Shane, uh, can I just take some photos? It's just, like, it's just for my personal thing. I would never, you know, I wouldn't put it online It's for the or wank anything. bank. It's for the wank bank. <laughs> Next minute, you jump on Reddit. It's, like, top post of the day yeah. on Warhammer thing. It's like, my friend made this tour. Hey, I said that you made it. Yeah. But I got the upvotes. Yeah, you so. got the upvotes. That's fine. That was before I had Reddit. I've already spent them all, so. Oh, okay. I've already spent all my upvotes. Yeah, good. Yeah. Good. Well, I actually won. Um, it was, I entered it for, um, what's that Games Workshop? It's the Army's on Parade. Yes. Yeah, and I got Best Scenic Base of 2017. There you I go. Got a little gold pin for it. There you go. Yeah, yeah, fucking Bro. won that shit. Bit of a popularity contest. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, you <laughs> slaughtered it. I did. There was like, I remember people voting, and I was like, oh, I better give Shane a vote, because like, first of all, I thought yours could just win on the merit of its. Like, if someone lined them all up to tell it who it was, yours would just win. But once it became like, share it with your friends, make your friends vote. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> you, oh my God. Yeah. You left yeah. those other guys in the dust. I feel like you were like 80 and the next closest was like 20 or something. Oh, I, I can't even remember. I have to look back. I reckon I've still got it like on my Facebook because I reckon I shared it. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely. It would be interesting to look back. You were like but, already killing people in the Warhammer community. And then they're like, I think you shared it. And then it was just, it was all over after yeah. that. <laughs> People were like, holy shit, look what Shane did. It's sick. Yeah, that was, I need to get was back Was that one basing. of your um, dino, dino gang scenic, sceneries? Or? No, no, I, uh, that was something different. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was just a model that I entered, the, the okay. Carnosaur. Carnosaur, what yep. I, I, I remember that one. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's the one I'm thinking of. It might be. Yeah, it might okay. Be. Yeah, but I, um, yeah, because I won that as well. That was you like a, just a. A monthly painter. That's the one I am thinking of. The carnosaur was yeah. a popularity contest. I the can't other one, what they you called it. Yeah, but um, I I ended up just throwing on. It was right after Eighth Edition came out. Yeah, because I had the Lord of Contagion from the yes. Death, Gu- Death Guard. Yeah, so I painted him up, and like he was one of the first models. I was like, this is like, he looks I'm sick. really happy with yeah. it. Um, and I've just slapped him on there with like five cultists. Yeah, like painted like poorly yeah and i reckon an, oh what did i have i had scions i painted oh, like yeah. six tempestus, tempestus scions, scions. yeah and it, i made it like a little scene like i had like the leader with his like coat you know his coats on his shoulders but yep. through his arms yeah with his plasma pistol yeah or with bolt pistol whatever it is Sick models yeah yeah i just I had him like him facing off with the water contagion and then Damn. the other ones like facing off with the just the cultists yeah like the models were painted like yeah, whatever. But the yep. base, I think the whole setting tied it all together. Yeah. Which was pretty cool. The base game was strong. The base game was strong. Absolutely. Yeah. We're going to spam the Discord. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, Jack, you'll see it. All Shane stuff. <laughs> I'll, I'll find it all and I'll post it all in there. So we, we've hit a fair bit. Like if you open a box, now you know how to cut, cut it all off. Yep. Clean, remo- it, clean it, it up. Yep. You can now, if you want to magnetize it, uh, if we want to talk about glues there's two options there's plastic glue which yep. will you can get from gw which will actually like melt the plastic yeah to the, it fuses the it two fuses pieces the, of plastic yeah. together so it's real strong yeah however once that's it it's it oh yeah it's on you're cutting it off yeah, yeah exactly um or you can super glue if you get something that's resin like star wars legion or yep. some something from the resin range like on, old models yeah 
or forge world models, yep. you have to super glue it. Although yep. resin is a type of plastic, plastic glue won't fuse it. No. Now you know how to glue it all together. <laughs> thought we should hit that quickly. One thing with resin, though, is a lot of people like to say you should wash the model. Yeah, okay. In hot, soapy water. Yeah. I've never had any bad experiences, but they say that if you don't wash them, there's a mold release agent on there. Okay. Which is basically glorified lube. Yeah, okay. Uh, if you prime it or paint it, it apparently it, it can affect the paint. Like, yeah. It, there's some sort of reaction. We so haven't pe- really worked with resin a heap. Nah. The Star Wars Legion models I have, which are resin, I just yeah. like threw standard primer on and they'll find and it's fine but yeah people obviously say it for a reason yeah. so research that if you, you're dealing with it resin. may be an old issue it may be like back in the day that's how they used to release the resin yeah models from the, it might yeah. be different nowadays but i suppose it doesn't hurt to be safe than sorry yeah check it out yeah suss it out yeah that's that's the hobby corner that's, that's what we hope to help you yeah. with and like there's so there's so much out there that's just our experience with basing yep. our experience with magnetizing We'll we'll throw as much info as we can in the Discord. Yep. Um, and on Facebook and yeah, whatnot. Yeah, we'll start posting some of our own stuff on Facebook. I reckon. Yeah, yeah. Show you what we're about. So yeah. when I'm talking about these bases, if I post them online and you look at them and you go, "They are shit," <laughs> email us. You and know, let us know. To, yeah. Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> um, or if you see me, you're like, damn, he, you know, really? It only took him that long. Yep. Yes, and it can for you. We're not experienced people. Anything we talk about is literally achievable. For anyone sitting there that's never touched hobby. Oh, yeah. Because we're, we're no pros. We're no pros. We're just two casual dudes that just enjoy the hobby. Yeah. We don't, you know, we spend our time. We're not working. Yeah. Other commitments, we'll just sit there and, and hobby. Like I'll throw something on Netflix. Yeah. All the, sorry, that's a lie. The wife will throw something on Netflix <laughs> that I don't want to watch. You'll be forced so to listen there. to it, though. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll sit there and I'll, I'll do, you know, bases yeah. or whatever I can get my hands on. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We're very chill with it. We're yeah. always looking for advice yeah, and tips. Um, we're just going to give you what we know works or what's worked for us, you know. So we'll help you. You help us. Yeah. Be our hobby homies. That's it. Yep. Join the hobby homies. So, yeah, you'll find us on Facebook at fb.me slash hobby homies. Nice. Email us just at, at uh, hobby homies at gmail.com. Nice. Join the Discord. That's all over the join. I can't share the link because it's gibberish. Yeah, it's gibberish, but if you go to like... Spotify. Spotify, You can yeah. just search Hobby Homies. Yep. Oh, we're on iTunes the, too. And we're on iTunes. So leave a five-star review. At, yeah. uh, or at, a one-star review. Or, whatever or, you or felt. don't. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. No, don't do that. Five-star <laughs> reviews. It helps us a lot. Like it, yeah. it basically makes it easier for people to find us. Oh, there so you the go. more listeners we can get, the more giveaways we can have. Yes. You win. Yep. Uh, as always, our giveaways are in the Discord as well. Yeah. We usually have them going all the time. There's yeah. at least one going at all times. So yeah. hit that up. Uh I think that's it. I think that's it. Yeah. That's, That'll do it. That's the Hobby Corner. It's hobby Corner. What? Thank you for stopping by on the Hobby Corner. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed your beer. N- no one could enjoy their beer as much as Shane did before. Yeah, because I had to either wear it or neck it, and I did half both. of that. You did yeah. both. <laughs> you wore it and Top necked it. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why not both? Thank you for listening to Hobby Homies. I'm Fox. Thanks, guys. I'm Shane. Peace. And that's oh, as always. Oh, yeah. Check, Check out, out Churchy. Churchy. He's on YouTube, Facebook. Ch- Churchy on YouTube. And Facebook. And Facebook. And YouTube. And YouTube. And Churchy on YouTube. And Churchy on YouTube. And also Facebook. And Hobby Homies. And Hobby yeah. Homies. You really don't need to check us out. You're already here. Yeah. <laughs> Peace, homies. Peace. Peace.